like a sneaky jalapeno in your burrito. That unexpected heat is shocking, but you can't live without it. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Oh, oh, yeah. So a Southwest Airlines flight from Atlanta to Houston was delayed for an hour over the weekend because somebody wouldn't clean up their fried rice that they'd spilt in the aisle. Uh, one of the passengers says the flight attendant insisted that whoever spilled the fried rice, I mean, it was, it was quite a bit of fried rice right in the aisle there. Uh, they were they were supposed to uh, to pick it up. She went up and down the aisle and asked each passenger one by one, loudly, who spilled the rice. Another flight attendant came and put a paper towel on it and again said, we are not leaving this gate until someone cleans up this rice. Flight was delayed over an hour because the flight attendant wouldn't budge. And I know how you love these power grabs from the flight crews. Uh, but at the same time, why not clean up your mess? If you made the mess, clean it up. Yeah. People are so entitled nowadays. We were just talking about this last week with the uh, the famous player, the athlete and his wife and the baby and the popcorn and making the mess. Um, the flight was delayed for an hour while the crew tried to figure out who the person was that made the mess. She gets on the loudspeaker, says again that we're not leaving until this rice is cleaned. <laughs> What is the conversation that you have with the uh, the captain, the pilot of the plane? You go up to the cockpit and you're like, hello, captain. Yes, um, we have some fried rice in the aisle back around, um, I don't know, 23 D and F. And so uh, and nobody will claim it. And I'm not cleaning it up. So we're not going to I'm not going to we're not going to close the door until we get this cleaned up. I mean, what does the captain say at that point? Dude, go do your job. Just get it picked up. Get somebody from See, janitorial services or whoever comes on the plane in between, and let's just sweep it up real quick, and let's get on our way. At some point, the, thing, the though, flight attendant is now costing the airline money yes. because they're delaying these flights. And what if these people have connecting flights? And like, wait, it's not my fault. I was sitting up in, I don't know, row six, and I get this row back here at 23, They've got the rice and the flight. Att- now I've missed my connecting flight. I'm not paying for that. You're going to pay for that. Here's where I waver on that. Okay. You at some point have to p- hold people responsible for their actions. Agree. In order to send a message. This is like dealing with children. Like what would you do if your children spilt um, the fried rice all over the floor? You would ground uh, you both could. of them if they didn't claim it, right? Like you come home you, from work, you, there's a mess. Yeah. Who did like, this? You oh. guys are cleaning this up. You guys are going to get grounded. Not there's not, not going to be any Nintendo. There's not going to be any pool. There's not going to be any summer until this uh, until this rice gets picked up, and then eventually they pick up the rice. Um, we as a society, I, I, this drives me nuts. So when we go out to eat, we'll see people with young kids toddlers for the most part and when we had toddlers we would um our toddlers would get food everywhere on the ground and we would go and we'd pick it up like with a napkin we'd pick it up you know with our fingers and put it in a napkin and wire it up on the napkin and put it on the plate for when they take it away nobody does that we're the only ones that do that and I, I we're a dying breed because i see it all the time now they're like ah that's what the staff is for and it's like, dude, you better be leaving a really good tip if that's what if you think that's what the staff uh, for because right? they've I mean, got to turn on. this table over. Right. Well, nobody claimed the fried rice, so the flight attendant just. But sucked, somebody sucked had it up. to see. She cleaned the rice, else, but the still. entire time she's yelling at all the passengers about how nobody was raised right and how disappointed <laughs> she is. All. This sounds like you. <laughs> all of us. The whole thing was also really comical, and kind of saw the light side of the situation. We're all stuck there. May as well make it funny. God, there's nothing worse than being stuck on an airplane that's ready to leave and you can't leave for some stupid reason. And now you're there an hour because somebody wouldn't just pick up their stupid rice. You know what this is going to happen? They're going to ban bringing any kind of food or beverage on the plane. Because right now you can do that. If Once you go through security, you can grab stuff and you can sit there and you can eat it. And they're gonna they're gonna yeah, screw it's that just up gonna be the, it's just gonna be the snack mix that they provide you, right? Whatever it is. Or if you purchase a meal ahead of time. But you're not getting, nobody's going to be allowed to bring anything on board because of entitled people like this that won't clean up after themselves. How about you just ban rice? Because it's impossible to clean up. <laughs> Popcorn, rice, anything that's small, snacky type stuff or that is hard to pick up. 
uh, sugar if you like to snack on some sugar. I can't believe nobody turned her in or him in. I can't believe nobody said, hey, it was that person right there. I saw them. What makes you think that it initially was a woman? Oh, because they said in the report. I think they said in the report that uh, the no, they don't know. Was, they don't know if it was a man or a woman that, that made the mess. I'm just saying. Somebody way. had to see somebody. Somebody, the, the person, do this. Somebody had to. Right. And that's what my hardline stance would be as the flight attendant. I'd be like, Nah, uh, uh-uh, not doing this. Not cleaning this up. This is too impossible to clean up. Plus, people probably were stepping on it, so then it gets embedded into the carpet, and it's uh, like that's terrible. There should be. They should have. They're things. at the gate. They should have a little vacuum, like a little. Uh, Dust buster. Once it's ground into the carpet, that's not that easy, man. I know, that's true. Rice is terrible. Yeah. That should not be allowed. I just can't believe nobody turned. I would have turned. I would have said, hey, it was that person right there. See that person right there with the styrofoam container? It was them. <laughs> or, yeah, the styrofoam container was probably shoved in with the magazines, too, you know? I mean, <laughs> God, that pisses me off on a flight when I go to get, like, check out the magazine or something like that. And there's something, somebody's garbage that's just like shoved in there. Oh my God, they say it's the dirtiest part of the airplane because it never gets cleaned. The little pouch where the magazines are. I believe it. Spending four hours in a box together every day can make you say crazy things. Don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Mr. Uh, I love AI. I think it's great. It's going to be amazing for society. Well, some surveys, aspects of it some shows aspects. that 62% of Americans think that AI will have a major impact on workers in general, but only 28% think that it will impact their jobs personally. We've already been impacted by it here. We used to um, play every song, everything, everything you heard on the radio, we would push a button. There, that, that's what the DJ would do. Now it's all done by a computer. So now the the music, the, all the station IDs, all the commercials, all that stuff is something that there used to be a physical button push for every one of those to play is now all programmed in advance and then, you know, set up in the morning and transferred. And then it just, it's like an iPod or something, a playlist. 25 uh, years ago, that's when the yeah. RAI started impacting jobs and it impacted jobs harsh. It did. I it mean, did. We, you and I are lucky because we get to do the morning show. Um, but, uh, everybody else, like, you know, I mean, there was a lot of people that were just, you know, it, yeah, you don't have to it, have DJs it, live in studio at the time of their shift. It can be recorded now because it's all on computers and things like that. And some of that is done, but, and, you know, but a lot of it, what we do here is still live, but the problem is, um, you know, it eliminates a lot of jobs, but at the, at the same time, it makes it a lot more efficient. Yeah. If you make yourself valuable in the workplace. Like, you know, show that you're willing to do other things. You didn't lose a job. Now, if you were just going to do that, then you ended up losing your job eventually. Like you said, efficiency is what it did. Uh, most people widely oppose using AI to make final hiring decisions, to track workers' movements, and use facial recognition technology to analyze their expressions. Could you imagine if I had my expressions analyzed and I was like, you know me, I'm always in a. You've got a scowl very, on your face. Uh, yes, I have. A, I've always got a scowl on my face. And it's mainly because I'm thinking about something. And when I'm thinking about something, I don't have a, a, a jovial. But I shouldn't have to worry about that if I'm doing a job, right? Like there's going to be a guy sitting in a room looking at AI and AI is going to say. Hey, Steve, Jeff looks upset. Maybe we should terminate him. Steve's going to be like, hey, I got to go with what AI said. Sorry, man. I mean, that that could be where we go, Jeremy. I mean, I think we're and, a ways off from that, but I understand what you're saying. We? Um, we weren't even talking about it three months ago. Now we're talking it's running, about it. It's going super fast. And I think there's AI in a lot of things that, uh, you know, that are convenient. There's good things about AI. We've come a long ways. Like, look at the look at the quickie car wash. You know, that's Is that AI though. That's AI. Yes, they they took a car wash and they took it from having people do it, and they program machines and computers to the point where they can put the tire dressing right on your tires as you drive through. That's true. That's true. I mean, they're waxing it. They're doing all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, all aspects of life. There's certain there's certain lines that society needs to be 
cognizant of. Yes, so. we need to we need to have rules and barriers of how far we let AI go. I noticed this last week. There was two big AI stories. One was uh, a podcast did a full hour interview with a Tom Brady AI. They were ordered to remove that because it wasn't Tom Brady and people could get it misconstrued. And then also somebody made a Drake song, a Drake and the Weekend do do a song together, I guess. And um and they were um it was called AI Drake or something like that. And then they were f- forced to remove that from all streaming platforms because it was copyright infringement because it's just a Drake, Drake and weekend song. Um, there was a group that I don't think is getting in trouble. It was out of the UK. They made a song with Oasis. Now um, it was a lost single for Oasis and you're an Oasis fan. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can find this right now. Yeah, I know what you're um, talking about. Uh, Luke Bryan, apparently who was a country, you know, he came to the fair and uh, he was on Jimmy Kimmel, and they played some AI version of him singing, and it was terrible. So not all of it's really good. We even had a, a programmer that we know take my voice to program something, and he sent it to me. And it was kind of close to me, but it was it was different. Um, that is really weird to me, to think that we could okay. just take AI and create music. But I don't know how you would... You would- this is Wally, dude. This is It's called... AISIS. The name of the band is called AISIS. <laughs> okay. Um, and um <laughs> and it's actually another band um that wrote an album of Oasis style songs and then used artificial intelligence versions of Liam Gallagher to sing them. Give this a listen. Well, I told sounds a lot like liam gallagher so right? where, do the, where does the actual vocals come from that's my question they give them the AI, the example of what it sounds like. And then the computer just creates it. Yeah. Wow. Now, my Pretty wife close. is really scared of AI. Like, I she is surprised. next level. It, 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 it's like, she's like, you don't understand. They can. Do you remember there was a video that came out, I don't know, about a decade or so ago, and it was Tom Cruise and, and his, his, facial reactions but it was all computer generated right that can and but people thought it was tom cruise reacting to this stuff and that is where they're at with this but they're 10 years advanced now to it where they could take a video of you right now you and i are on a video feed right right this is what the this is what the tinfoil hat people are saying okay you and i are on a video feed with each other but somebody could hack in, get that video feed, get the information, like us talking about whatever it is we're talking about, replicate our voices, put unsavory words in our mouths, and make it look like we're doing it. That is scary AF. Okay. That is scary AI AF. AF. That is scary AF. Wow. Liam Gallagher, Liam Gallagher said he likes it. He says, um, <laughs> he says it's better than a lot of the other snizzle that's out there. I sound really good. <laughs> this is a guy that's never going to come back to music, right? I mean, of course right. he's going to say that. God, that's crazy. Careful. You don't want to learn from this. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. It's Dumbass of the Day, and it's brought to you by California Diesel and RV. They work on pickup trucks and motorhomes. And they can manage your fleet vehicles. Stop by and see them in Oceano or online at CaliforniaDieselAndRV.com. How pathetic can some people be? If you want to feel better about yourself, go on a cruise. <laughs> I, I never wanted to go on a cruise, but Louis Black, a comedian, booked a comedy cruise. I got there. I've never even seen a cruise ship up close. They hold 4,000 people. This thing is gigantic. My sister goes, what was it like? Maybe me and Matt will go. I go, here's what it was like, Kate. Picture if we were all in Las Vegas, standing in the Bellagio, and all of a sudden, it just sailed away. 
<laughs> the whole building, and nobody panicked. They're like, bye, see ya. <laughs> there are a lot of overeater, overdrinkers on these ships, which is why I felt so healthy. The, <laughs> the people next to me were a nice couple from Wisconsin, and they had balloons all over their door, like hundreds of them. And I said, oh, is it somebody's birthday or anniversary? And the guy goes, no. We just get so hammered on this ship, and these rooms all look alike. We can never find our room. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. <laughs> we were talking to some friends over the weekend, and we're, we're, you know, we're doing our family trips. going to be, in the summertime, it's going to be a cruise. And um, they, they try to push that drink package on you. They're like, unlimited drinks. $60 a day per person, which seems like a good deal, right? But then the yeah. drinks are like seven, eight bucks. So then you start doing the math on that. And you're like, okay, I'd have to drink nine drinks a day. I'm taking my kids on this thing. Am I going to drink? I, I, I don't even think at the height of my of my party days, pre Mary. Well, let's see. Let's say you get I, up I and you have a drink couple. Nine drinks in a day. You're a mimosa guy, right? Have two mimosas at breakfast. There's two. I'm not a mimosa guy. I don't. I don't drink mimosas. Oh, I thought you did. It's okay. Nothing. What do you drink? You drink a Bloody Mary. So on a cruise, Flamdinger? what I do to get my money's worth is I drink the uh, Long Island iced tea because I only need two of those <laughs> well, in order yes, to be fine. You got to re, you know, new strategy because now but you're listen, unlimited. If I drink the Long Island iced tea, that's going to be. $24 plus tip. I'm in a half, okay? Half of what that drink package would cost, and then that's all I'm really drinking right. the whole day. Like, if I have two Long Island iced teas, I'm set for the day, okay? I'm I'm buzzed. So, But the food's always free, right? I remember I went on yeah. one cruise, and right. we uh, it, was, it was a big one. It was like a seven or eight day deal. And uh, I remember any time of the night, you could order... I could order these little crab and shrimp sandwiches to come to my room. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I told my good, I told my son good. we're going to have a bonding moment. I was like, you know what, dude? One of these days on this cruise, two o'clock in the morning, we're going to get up, we're going to go down, we're going to get some ice cream. And he's like, really? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I really think he'll cry when uh, when we have to leave the cruise ship because of all the pizza and the ice cream that he'll have access to. Plus, they do a pretty good job of keeping you busy, right? They've got all kinds of activities. I mean, I just had a casino. Yeah, we're stopping here. Time, and you're going to go here. You know, this we're doing this. this. this and yeah. Then uh, we're going to play bingo. Then we're going to uh, do a little dance on the pool deck. Uh, there's water slides for the kids. I mean, yeah. come on. There wasn't enough, though, for this these two buddies. They were sharing a room. Um, they were going on the cruise together. And they were fishermen. They were anglers. And they brought their fishing poles. And they took them up to their room. They were on the, I don't know, eighth or ninth deck fl- up from the ocean. And decided they were going to fish off their balcony. It, they were instructed that fishing is Ill- not, a, well, illegal, whatever you It's banned on the boat. You can't fish from anywhere on the boat while the boat is moving okay. or, or docked. I've been on a few cruises. I don't ever remember that warning. I, I, apparently, you have to look it up. I don't know, but there is. It's in the rules. It says no fishing. It's in from the your terms balcony. of the conditions that nobody reads. Yeah. So they were eight, nine stories up, and they're fishing, and they actually caught some fish. And there's they a did? video going around great. on uh, cruisehive dot com, <laughs> and you can awesome. you can look these guys catch their fish. Well, they've been they were warned. They did it again, and now they've been banned from Carnival Cruise Line. Oh. They can never cruise with Carnival again. Because fishing from their ships is prohibited. Because it's, I guess it could be dangerous. I don't know. Fish falls off the hook, hits well, somebody yeah. in the head. Well, here's the thing. You have to negotiate nine stories. I'm like, impressed. Like, like Kathleen Madigan was just saying, it is it is it is the Bellagio on the sea. So you're sitting there and negotiating nine stories as you're pulling the fish in. Right. Yeah, that's, that's how do you, like, I'd be pissed if I was on the sixth story and I see a fish come swinging by my balcony. I'm like, what the hell is going on above me? I'm impressed that they were able to hook it and drag that thing like 100 feet in the air. <laughs> Up to their balcony without losing it. Like that's impressive. It's just a big. It's just a big pendulum swinging back and forth. Fish. Uh, apparently, this was a trip down to the Bahamas. So if you're if you're heading down to the Bahamas, the fishing is good. You just can't do it from your balcony. 
So congratulations to these two anglers. You were Jeff and Jeremy's. Dumbass of the day. It's Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on 93.3 KZOZ. That's living on the edge, right? Okay. We're sitting here talking while we're playing the music. And Jeremy thinks it's ridiculous that these guys got banned for life from the carnival cruise. Yeah, well, I mean, I understand. You, you off, tell of, them, off of the ninth story of the cruise. You don't ban them for life. I mean, come on. Seriously, like, they're not harming anybody. Yes, they are throwing something over, you know, 100 feet down into the water that has hooks, and they're bringing it back up. And the, and I understand all that, and you tell them not to do it anymore, and maybe you, you, you find them or something, but you ban them for life? You can no longer I, go on any carnival cruise the rest of your life because you fished off our boat. It's not like they assaulted someone. Okay. I watched the video. I mean, I saw the video that they took of them catching a fish off of the ninth story. And you That's could a heck tell, of a haul, isn't it? <laughs> yes, because this fish is just slamming into the side of the cruise ship as they're sitting there reeling it up. And it's one of these big, you know, exotic Caribbean fish, you know, that, that's got like... The fish was know. 18 inches. It wasn't that big. Well, I mean, it was, it's decent size to be fishing, fishing off the ninth story. I mean, yeah, okay, no, no, I, I know. It. I get it. I get it, Mr. Fisherman. But it, I don't want to catch the big fish. Everybody else catches smaller fish than me. Burr, 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 it's not like burr, a big burr, dorado burr, 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 burr. or like some, you know, when you say big ocean fish, people are I'm going to drop some names of some fish now because I'm a fisherman. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> it's just because you don't know any names of fish. Burr, dorado. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I get it, okay? But. It shows, like, the video that I saw shows this fish slamming into other people's balconies as they're pulling it up. Like, I'm going to get pissed off if a fish comes flinging into me as I'm sitting there enjoying my morning coffee in a newspaper. <laughs> I would get a kick out of it. Like, hey, there goes a fish. <laughs> and I'd look up and I'd be like, hey, how many you catch today? <laughs> Try to keep that fish out of my coffee, okay? You are a much kinder person than I am. Yeah, that yeah, deserves a lifetime fishing, ban. They're fishing. They're fishing. They're not. Here's the thing with a lifetime ban. I think it's impossible to hold up. Now, in the cruise business, it might be a little bit more possible because there's so much documentation that goes along with it. But once I received a lifetime ban from the Harrahs in uh, Reno, Nevada. And what happened was one of my friends was, uh, you know, he got drunk in the in the casino and he decided to steal the cutout of um, whatever magician was going to be there or okay. something like that. He, right. And he, t- he took it up to his room. Well, the problem is it's a casino, so everybody knows that you're stealing. Like, and there's cameras like, okay. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, they go, go, up, to, go up to room uh, 1704 and please uh, get the cutout back and uh, notify these guys that they're bad for life. So I was in the room across the hall, but I was complicit because I was with him when he did this, and I actually probably goaded him into doing it. And I was like, Scott, you could just take that. That's fine. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> so Scott <laughs> did it because he was under the influence. <laughs> oh, he, but Jeff, it was has the said this, thing. Jeff has said this to me as well over the years. Oh, it's, it'll be fine. Just go ahead. So I'm staying in the room across the hall from Scott. And then we got like three guys in our room. And then Scott's across the hall. He's got three guys in his room. You know, we were there for a divorce party, which is, which is fun. Um, it's one guy, uh, five guys trying to help his buddy get through a divorce in, in Reno, Nevada. I mean, you know, you could, you could imagine the expectations that were on that trip. So anyways, um, I'm looking across the hall through the little peephole because I hear the security come up there and they're banging on Scott's door. And they're like, security, open up. We're no, we know you're in there. And Scott's not answering the door. They're trying to stay <laughs> as silent as possible. So I'm watching this all go down through the little peephole. And um, <laughs> Scott, <laughs> Scott eventually opens the door like after five minutes of pounding they're like hey we're gonna call the police we're security we're gonna call the reno police if you don't open this door so he opens the door but he opens the door with the cutout of the magician (laughs) like the magician is answering the door he goes yeah he goes and he's standing behind the magician scott's a short guy so he could totally pull this (laughs) off right 
So he's standing there and he goes, he goes, hi, how can I help you today? <laughs> Yank the cut out out of his hand. They pull him out in the hallway. He's in his like underwear and, sh- and t-shirt. And he's like, hey, what are you doing, man? He goes, that's it. Go in there, get dressed. We're keeping the door open. We're watching you get dressed. You are getting a lifetime ban from Harris. Now, Scott worked in the industry, okay? Yeah. He lived in Tahoe, right? South Lake Tahoe. Yeah, okay. Remember that. You know who Scott went to go be a pit boss for the next year? No. Harris. Oh. He went to go be the pit boss at the Harris. After he was banned for life for stealing the... The the lifetime ban is such BS. (laughs) Hey, guys. Are you looking for me? (laughs) (laughs) Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.